I also made the case for owning Bitcoin, the quintessence of scarcity premium. Scarcity premium. It's literally the only large tradable asset in the world that has a known fixed maximum supply by its design. The total quantity of Bitcoins cannot exceed 21 million. Bitcoin is the hardest money that has ever been invented. If you don't have my private key, you cannot spend my Bitcoin, period. And this is the power of Bitcoin. This is the power of Bitcoin. So it's the first time we figured out how to create true property that you can take possession of with full custodial full rights. Custodial rights. What's going on, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Talking to Bits, where we walk you through Bitcoin bit by bit so we can provide you with the information you need to succeed and persist. Back with episode 52, got Ben in the house as always. 52, bro. What's good, man? Coming off fresh off that LA sun. Yeah, man. Was it sunny? Was it cold? Uh, 70s, palm trees. 70s? Palm trees. I mean, I mean like, if you, if you live from here, if you're from here, you're in shorts if you want it, you know? Yeah, yeah. People might look at you like... You know, I find it kind of weird that uh, down south uh, in Texas, they're going through like the ice thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, Florida was supposed to be like in the 30s and stuff like yeah. that. Like, And they are bugging. Like, they're calling it like snowpocalypse and stuff. They don't have the infrastructure. No, well, all right. Listen, that that's true. Yeah. Uh, but we're not even talking about like their city or anything. Like, like people, like, uh, fam, like. Yeah. But then again, it could be the opposite for me. I go down there, get to that heat, and I'm over here like, where's the cold? And they're like, fam, stop. Like, this ain't nothing. Yeah. So I get it. But some of the things that I've heard some people say, I can't tell if they're like trolling or if they really feel this way. Like, yeah. it's like, yeah, you guys being serious or is this? Right. We just got two feet, two and a half feet. Like, I legit flew out and landed in Cali that night. Like. Anyways. From snow blowing to that. Yeah, crazy. But, uh, the, but the Texas thing, I got friends out there. They say that when I learned that the weather got worse than I thought out there, like it didn't make sense to me. I just assumed Texas was warm all the time. Like that they I, get an inch of snow here and there. I didn't know they would get to 30. Yeah. Right. Like that. But like, it, obviously, you would think that some type of coolness has to go down there at some point during the year. But right. yeah, I didn't think they would go to 30. So, so yeah, I hope all y'all Texans are doing well. Last year, I know a lot of people have PTSD from what happened last year that, that lived down there. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, y'all electric grid, electric grid didn't shut down. I haven't heard any stories of anything okay. crazy happening. So that's a good comeback. That's a good bounce back. But uh, all jokes aside, I think last year was, you know, caught a lot of people off guard. People weren't ready for that. And when you start hearing it's going to get to 30s and it's going to be ice, I can see the panic and like, yo, again? Damn. Mm-hmm. Like, what's happening? Especially, Trauma. like you said, in an area yeah. where this rarely happens. So, right. I don't know. Call the cli- <laughs> climate scientist people. I don't know nothing about nothing. But I-, I-, I can see where it catches them off guard. Either way, episode 52 of the best podcast on Earth or the yes, best sir. Bitcoin podcast here on Earth. I told y'all. I told y'all. <laughs> Before we started, we you know, because we, we, we're recording here, but we're going to either make everybody better so y'all can have better content, and me, because I'm, I'm a fan, you're a fan, we still listen to podcasts, we, uh, or we're just going to rise to the top, and we're just going to be the number one here, because we got it all down package, everything there, episode 52, uh, so we're 52 blocks away from our genesis. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Somebody reached out to me the other day, and there's still people listening to the very first episode of Talking to Bits. Crazy. When when people pull it up, I'd be like, No, 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 don't start there. I'd be like, yeah. I'd be like, I'd be like, 30, <laughs> me too. 30, 32, 33. That's the basics right there. Yeah, yeah. And I just um, feel like our newer stuff is better. I mean, I, I love the the early stuff or whatever, and the idea behind it. I remember episode one, Last Train to Paris. So I still like that's when I was going down the hole. So I was like, Yeah, this is insane. But yeah, shout out to those listeners that would go back. I personally don't go all the way back to like number one of people stuff. I nah. do it the other way around. Yeah. If it's dope enough. Top down. Yeah, right. But like now we're going on 52 and you think about like that's that's round to an hour. That's 52 hours of content. So if you start from one. Work. Right. Like so I'd rather work backwards if it's good enough. Uh, but Genesis Black is still performing, man. And that's yes, pretty sir. cool. And, and shout out to the listeners. We appreciate y'all as always. But episode 50 here, uh, 52 is here. And uh, 52 is a lot less than 30 trillion. Mm. Talk about it. Talk about it. So, Senator Lummis, mm-hmm. Loomis, I still like Loomis. It sounds better. But yeah. I think it's Lummis. I'm pretty sure it's Lummis. So, she had a, uh, uh, she had a post, and Senator Lummis from Wyoming, uh, 30 trillion. The number is right there off the top. It's hard, for m- it's hard for me to believe that we found ourselves in this position, but here we are. Our debt is now 125% of our GDP, meaning... We owe more money than we are generating in our economy. This is not sustainable. I've introduced multiple bills to address our debt crisis, and I implore Senate. I don't want to get into the political jargon here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in my experience in marketing, in my experience in all that stuff, and 30 trillion just sitting there as the very first characters of that post makes it stick out like a damn sore thumb. Um, And, yeah, I don't think on a day-to-day basis most people realize what that number is. No, bro. It Not is insane. 
In in 2008, they were talking about printing billions. A decade later, they're printing trillions. It's crazy. And so, I mean, for context, you can't count to a trillion because you'll die first. And so, like, 30 trillion. I don't know if that's true, by the way, but yeah. It's, it's staggering like that. Is that true? <laughs> Google it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to do that. First of all, we don't do Google here. We, we cut that <laughs> out. Go. Yeah, brave we're gonna, browser. We're, we're going to brave that up. Yeah. But, uh, I'm yeah. in transition to brave. Yeah, I went uh, I, I, on two of my devices, completely Chromeless. Let's, if you mm-hmm. just get your, your your Gmail inside of Brave, like, you know, like go to the actual website, because mm-hmm. this is a thing I, ah, I, yep. that most people forget because we're so spoiled. Yeah. You don't have to have the icon to go directly there. You yeah. can just go to gmail.com. It's just easier through the app. <laughs> it's easier through the app. Yeah. But like Brave is amazing. Um, I, I guess I'm late on it. I've always known about Brave, but like, uh, incentives are a bitch. I was, was yeah, you know, like my, I had an Android phone for a long time. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go with the convenience, uh, and, and just make it easier. But as I get older and as we go deeper and deeper down, where if you see things like this happening, yeah, I'm gonna get off of Google. Um, mm-hmm. they, it, it was uh, I heard somebody call Google as well, which we all, we all know this. It's the crazy part. But um, they had like a term for it, but it was like a surveillance engine technology. Like right, like it's not it, 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 it very long ago detached itself from being the service to provide a service and, and and turned into this just like repository of just everybody of everything and yeah they, they can pretty much secure and watch and, and, and maintain everything i think that's extremely scary but for a while just like this 30 trillion number you just ignore those things you just care that your gmail dings or that your assistant says this and that but i i, I encourage people to just change that that frame of thought and brave um, my whole point of saying that is Brave, I, I think, has gotten me to start, like, you know, doing this, right? Like, slowly but surely unraveling um, because it's good. Like, I tried that, that go. I didn't think it was good. Um, it's good. It feels good. It feels like it Chrome. It looks good. It's snappy, right? Yeah. It's on the Chromium browser, so I get it. But other people build on the Chromium browser and suck. Mm-hmm. So, I, so people have told me, like, oh, because it's Chrome. It's just Chrome. It is, but it's not, right? Because... I've tried other shit that's on Chromium, and we all know, uh, well, uh, some people know as developers that you can build off of Chromium, but nobody ever did what he, uh, what they, what this company has done, right? Which is, all right, well, let's get all the junk out of this thing, and let's just keep it lightweight and keep it smooth. I enjoy it. It's cool. Yeah. Um, combine that with your favorite password manager, mm-hmm. all right? and you could definitely de-Google yourself, because then your password manager will do the fast things for you that Google did, the sign in quick, right? So like... You, you back yourself up in encryption with a password manager so you don't trust Google with that information and they're going to autofill so you still have convenience and then you just do shortcuts for like Gmail and, and whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, like I use, um, I use LastPass and so I can, I can transition no problem. Yeah, but exactly. LastPass. You know? And all the extensions are supported. They just remove those damn trackers and I'm a, I don't know if anybody's ever like done this or whatever. Like, you know, I watch YouTube or whatever and I know marketing Mm-hmm. I don't know what trackers are. I know that there's trackers for specific moments in the video, five, ten minutes in, just to kind of do this like detailed marketing or whatever. Fam, in a 35 minute video, there was 93 trackers on YouTube on that one video. 93. Yeah, you don't need to know that much about me, man. I don't know what the 93 were. I think there's a panel where you can go in, and, and I'm on the Twitter here, and it's actually four for Twitter. So like everywhere has these things, but YouTube, Google. It's by far the most intrusive, like 93. I was blown away by that. I was like, and I, I, you could go in and dig in. I didn't even want to. I was like, I don't even want to know what they know. I don't want to know who's paying. I don't know what, what they're sending. Uh, but thankfully, we're, bra- we're brave. If you believe they're, you know, their whole stick, what, what do they call it? They're, they're slick. Mm-hmm. I can never say that word right. Stick, th- their thing. <laughs> Uh, then you're being protected by all these damn trackers and all that stuff. And then you combine that with a VPN and you're kind of like, I don't know, Neo from the... <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I, I have this conversation with people who don't really understand. And it's like, to me, it makes perfect sense. But they don't even see, it, like like we were talking about, they don't even see the need for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why do I need to block those ads? Why do I need to have something not follow me around on the internet? Like, why? Like, that's in your best interest. Yeah. Including yeah. a VPN. No, and then they always do like the leaning argument of like, but like you have to let them know about you so you can get your alarm to be at 9 a.m. automatically Mm -hmm. or some some stupid shit like that. But that's just the brain. I mean, I think I I don't know where this was years ago. I've heard this, but like the brain is its only job is to keep you alive. And because of that feature, it actually is very creative at designing ways to make you do nothing. 
right? Because it thinks, because it's very smart, fam, if you don't do this, you're going to live longer. If you don't waste energy, you won't die, right? Like you can keep breathing if you don't. So like procrastination, a lot of that kind of stems from that whole like core of the brain where it's like, oh, I don't want to do that because my brain wants to stay alive. But that doesn't mean it's the right or wrong thing. It's just your brain playing tricks on yourself. So I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's just one of those things, man. We need to get off of that for sure. Um, I don't know if you ever had gradually than suddenly. I think it fit well with this 30 trillion thing because uh, over the series of a, of a few essays, a lot of essays, uh, Parker kind of breaks down this whole, and this is old. This was like, uh, I think this even predates me uh, in Bitcoin. So this is something that's been around for a while. This is by far no secret, but a lot of people haven't traversed it, right? Like they mm-hmm. look at it and it's it's massive. It's, it's crazy. Uh, but if you go in through the whole, um, and let me pull it up because I got a link here. If you go through it, it's uh, um, somebody did a, a Twitter thread and kind of broke down gradually, then suddenly. Uh, the post does come from Unchained Capital. Uh, and this is the first of a series of threads based on the gradually and suddenly series. And then they took a big piece here that I actually really enjoy. Education is a critical aspect of Bitcoin. I hope that by distilling my own thoughts, I can help others accelerate their path in understanding a complex subject. Ultimately, I like to think that's what we do. Did we succeed? Yeah. Eh, you let me know. <laughs> I mean, it, it, Parker communicates it a certain way. Yeah. To a certain people. For sure. Right. Uh, and we're doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, our listeners are familiar to us. You know, I agree. Uh, and, and, you know, more diverse, diverse than that. But like, who is our core audience? Probably people who understand our references. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that is true. And we get to distill Parker Lewis for them. Right. <laughs> like it's one of those things like we're standing on the shoulders of giants as well. Fast. Parker Lewis being one of those guys. Um, so like we can digest this. See, I think Parker does a good job of not even making it complicated. So, mm-hmm. like, I, I'm hard pressed to say complicated, but yeah. to the most people don't want to read these long essays. People don't understand. But this thing goes through it. It's very long. It goes through, you know, the fiat exchange rate versus the go rate uh, gradually and suddenly. He actually puts another quote here that I love. Uh, As Hemingway penned uh, the, the process of going bankrupt, it's also the way that government backed currencies hyperinflate and often how people come to understanding Bitcoin because they realize that that's happening. When you realize that correlation is when you kind of just start going down this thing. Bitcoin is money, or rather Bitcoin has become money. Um, it was a slow process to involve. I mean, this is a really good, I'll leave the link here in, in the show notes, why hundreds of millions of people exchange this harder and real world value. He talks about why we even think the dollar is even important. And it's like this, uh, um, it's like this consensus thing that we, you know, con- of course is what it is. But like, basically what he's trying to say, it's, it's an imaginary promise that we actually give value to by just believing in it. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's when you hear it that way, it's kind of like dumb. Like it's like, why the fuck do we care specifically as much as we do? Because a lot of people would dedicate their lives to get to the money. But the real value is all the things they had to do to get to the money. That's the irony thing. That money means absolutely nothing if you don't appreciate all the stuff that it takes to get there. Um, but even that, like you wouldn't think that way if you cared so much about the money that you're blind. But when you think about it in this perspective, it's like, it's only worth something because I say it's worth something. If I say it's worth nothing, which most Bitcoiners do, this thing doesn't even matter. This thing is pointless. And it's actually, because of historical trend, going to the fucking dirt. Uh, but, you know, gradually and subtly did that for me. Uh, and I think this is a nice, I loved it. It's, uh, I'm four threads in, five threads in. Uh, it's just concise enough for people to get this information really fast. He talks about adoption. Uh, he talks about why we care about trading. Uh, he quotes Ross Stevens here, which we all love. This was actually in the Fiat Standard book, uh, which is fantastic read. I'm only halfway through it, but safety, you don't disappoint. They didn't disappoint the first time. But Ross Stevens does the preface uh, for safety in the Fiat Standard. And this paragraph is actually from in there. I texted my sister, which is my family Bitcoin buddy, um, specifically uh, this, because I think this is important for people to know. And it's... Uh, you can stay on the fiat standard in which some people get to produce unlimited new units of money for free, just not you, or opt into the Bitcoin standard in which no one gets to do that, including you. That is extremely massive. If I could think of an ele- elevator pitch for Bitcoin, it is that right there. That's why it's extremely important, but that's part of this thread. That's part of, like, I check it out in the show notes and the links. It ends with 17 little threads, and they got really cool graphics. Mm. 
Shout out to Unchain for that. Might sound right. biased or not, but I love the graphics. I think the graphics are like eye appealing and they bring people into this conversation. So um, if you understand gradually and suddenly the loop around here for the listeners, go back to that Loomis post again. 30 trillion. Read that. Go back to the gradually and suddenly snippets. I love that it's in snippets because I could tell you to go read it, but it's long if you go read it. Go to the, these two Twitter links on the show notes. Head to the 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 the, the, uh, the Parker Lewis uh, gradually and suddenly quick snippet series. Bounce back to Loomis. If you have to do it one more time, you're gonna be blown away. It's gonna change. It's gonna make you bullish. It's gonna make you bullish as hell. But just do that. That's why I figured we we bring those things up, and I'm gonna make sure I put those links there. Um, there's a bipartisan just to stick on the uh, U.S. political trend, which I hate. Uh, bipartisan U.S. bill would exempt Bitcoin transactions from tax. If capital gains are less than two hundred, yeah, there's a there's that, and there's a few other things going on. Um, there was an article about uh, new tokens being created won't be labeled as, or or they will be labeled as like basically like new money and and not taxable. What do you mean new token? Um, like new shit coins or new Bitcoin? I, I think it was like uh, a it was non Bitcoin, but if um. Yeah, based, I think it was a non-Bitcoin thing and they were trying to pass it like that. And so I think the point of the post was like, that can be applicable to Bitcoin if it's applicable to something else. Interesting. Um, yep. and, and so like sooner than later, man, there has to be incentive. You know what I mean? Like, for who? For the government? For, for, the for like the people. Like okay. uh, everyone's going to have to get competitive with this. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can go to El Salvador, no capital gains for Bitcoin. You can go to Puerto Rico, there's no capital gains. But like eventually when people can, again, the sovereign individual book, like this is the future where people have to attract, you know, the government has to attract people with incentive. Taxes yeah. need to come down and freedom needs to go up. Literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a weird struggle for me. Um, this is all to me and I don't know shit about shit. This is all great if you believe that the government has the power that it has in the next five to 10 years. Mm. I don't care about this stuff because, and maybe I'm, Doxing myself, maybe. I just don't see the reason. I have this argument about Bitcoin backed IRAs, and I am stupid to these things. I get mm -hmm. that, right? So, like, I keep going back to this argument and keep going back to this. I just haven't had the conversation with that one person that can change my mind on it. I understand why tax deferred Bitcoin is important. I mm -hmm. do. That's same reason 401ks at one point for nine to fivers is important. Same reason, right? I get that. To me, is like, why are you caring what rules they put around that currency when this is supposed to be superior superior money? I mean, mm. unfuckable wealth. Supreme money. <laughs> unfuckable wealth. And I'm supposed to worry about a realized tax yeah. gains or, or, or something like that. When there's an also, you've done it, you've highlighted it briefly. There's also another really good incentive to just never sell it and just lean on it. So are, are, are Bitcoin IRAs important? Yes. I'm sure to a certain audience and demographic they are. Mm -hmm. um, are if, bipartisan if, bills if, important? Great. If, if you're young, just buy Bitcoin. Tuck it away just, in cold storage. Nah, see, but I don't want to. See, I don't want to. And we, you know, we always say this ain't financial advice. I don't yeah. know that. Maybe yeah. I'm just missing something. Yeah. Right. And, and, and. I, I respect it, and, and, and I think it's huge. I think it's actually a, a, a big thing in Bitcoin to be able to store wealth and buy clean Bitcoin, I guess, from an IRA and not have to get any wishy-washy, like hold an IOU, like clean. I get that whole thing. I really do. Even, you know, the unchained way, right? Like the keys and that. It's fantastic. But like, yeah, I'm with you. Like, wait a minute. I opted into this one because I wanted to not follow their rules. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm stupid. Maybe I'm young, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm in my mid-30s. Maybe when I get to 50, I'm like, nah, fam. Like, I should have done that IRA when I was 30. I don't know. But I've had the conversation a few times. I get good arguments. I'm just going to hold. I, I'm, mm. What? Like, yeah. I. this is like, yeah. that's, I, I don't understand. This is like telling me never use this email ever, right? And then once, if I use the email, I'm in trouble. So if I send my sats is what I'm saying to anywhere, to lean it, to do whatever, to sell it. Like, I can't do that because I got to worry about uh, rules. And like, no, if I want to sell, I'm going to sell. Yeah. If I don't, I'm going to lean. And if I want to hold, I'm going to hold. Yeah, hey, listen, permissionless money is, 
a beautiful selling point. Like, See, but this is why I knock your argument and most people, you're not wrong. A lot of people yeah. feel the way you, this is why I knock the whole, but this is how we get to the next level. It's an, it's oh, an, yeah, this yeah. is what happens though. Yeah. Like, why are we worried about bipartisan? And I added it here to get to this point. Why would we worry about the U S legislation? Why does senators have to adopt it? Right. Like, and yes, this, this is why I don't think your argument is wrong. I just think it's flawed. Yes. In order for it to scale, people need to feel safe using it. And for some reason here in America, people feel safe for laws and they feel safe with all that. So I get that end of it. But this fuck shit only happens when you start bringing in a lot of people that are scared about losing their money. Big wealth motherfuckers are scared that they're going to lose their money. So this was, they say, oh, well, just in case, let's add a bill here that make sure that we're defend. And then later, 20 years down the road, 10 years down the road, they put a fucking uh, a loophole in there that says, oh, you know, wow, well, uh, actually, uh, C-A-B says that the Bitcoin now, but go fuck yourself. This is a problem, man. I think it's a huge problem for unfuckable money. I think it's a problem too. Yeah, no. I mean, it, again, even with companies like BlockFi, yep. holding Bitcoin, rehypothecating in the background, watching the Bitcoin price go from 69K to say 30K, I was surprised we didn't see major liquidation like, I, a, across any of these companies that are doing that stuff. So like, it it has to happen at some point. You know what I mean? And people uh, are really going to lose their Bitcoin. They're going to get wrecked. You know what I mean? They're going to get wrecked. Dude, Stop chasing legislation, man. We don't need approval from them. El Salvador, if all the facts are, it's working. These places, we don't need the U.S. government to tell us to do shit. I'm on a public podcast saying that. When I was orange-pilled, this is what I felt this was about. When I hear people talk about the revolution, and I don't want to hear these LARPs out here. There's a lot of these motherfuckers out here. Listen. This is a revolution. This is not a, a, a happy, happy. As long as I could get dollars, as long as I, you fail to understand the point, in my opinion. So that's is why these like legacy products is what I call them. Make people a ton of money, you know, sustain businesses. Sure. But boy, is this bad for Bitcoin. Overall, because now we're programming people, especially the non-convinced people or the on the fence people to run away the first time some prehistoric fossil that somebody in their family respects says some bad shit about Bitcoin. That's what we're incentivizing here by drop by even giving a fuck. But Jose, you don't run a, a business on your own that's built off Bitcoin. You don't care about tech. I get it. All I'm highlighting is is that this is bad for Bitcoin. Is everybody in different shoes and needs certain legislation to go their way? Absolutely. If you're a business, you want friendly breaks. You want things that the regular guy doesn't say. But I will always be on this hill screaming out loud on the top of my lungs. Then why the fuck did you get into this? Because we're going right back to their shit. Wait till they start locking your Bitcoin away behind wallets. Wait till they literally pull the gold standard on you dumb fucks. Again... Because they're going to tell you some dumbass reasons for you to send your Bitcoin somewhere, like a bank account. And then they're going to pull the fucking Easter egg out of your ass and say, well, these wallets don't belong to you. They belong to us. And they're going to take your Bitcoin and they're going to do it to the citizens all over again. And then they're going to say, well, our U.S. dollar, whatever the fuck they're going to call it, is, you know, from Bitcoin. Uh, like you know, we're holding the Bitcoin, but you could de- denominate it in fucking whatever the it, shit is it, called. It becomes the new gold standard. They do it all over again, you dumbasses. And listen, I'm a dumbass. We're all d- stop being a dumbass if you continue to listen to this show and continue to do this bullshit. It starts with leaving it on an exchange, but pretty soon, y'all dumbasses are gonna be leaving your Bitcoin with the bank. There, there was a meme that was uh, it was Coinbase, and it was like you know. Uh, show us your Vax Pass if you want your your Bitcoin. Fam. You know what I'm saying? How Stop. far away from that? All these banks are popping up. All these banks are saying it. And I don't think it's for your best interest. That's the funny thing to me. So when they get that loophole that I spoke about a little bit earlier, 10 years down the road, where it says, oh, no, because of this loophole, it now belongs to the bank. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and they, don't worry, they're going to give you this uh, U.S. digital dollar, <clears throat> and that's going to, you know, you're going to be able to trade with that. And don't, don't worry, we'll hold your Bitcoin safely. They're going to do it again, man. They're going to do it again, and it's very easy to do because of that. Because we're incentivizing, as this is, if it's not Bitcoin Magazine, it's one of these where we're incentivizing these publications of people that I think, in my situation, for the best of Bitcoin, don't even matter. They don't even matter. Adoption is what matters in Bitcoin, but. Just like the IRA argument, I love to loop back to things. Just because the IRA argument, same thing. I may be stupid. I may com- be completely blind to a different aspect. And this is what I love about Bitcoin. Eventually, somebody's going to bump into my traverse. And, and to, it could be a listener. It could be a conversation. And they're going to set me straight. And they're going to give me the right information. Or I'll live the next 30, 40 years of my life saying, I was right. This is bullshit. We're giving it to them. We're giving it away. We're giving it away. I just don't trust them. And when you think they're going to be as big as they are in 10 years, you're not bullish. You're actually the opposite. You're actually just trying to buy something different than a stock, but treat it like a stock. You need to get the fact that I'm not worried about your legislation when in 10 years, 20 years, I don't even think y'all going to exist. You will in some way, shape or form. You just won't be that sovereign individual, right? Mm -hmm. Government exists. They're just much smaller, less powerful. Mm -hmm. So like, I see stuff like this and it just I just keep scrolling by. I'm not just not interested in this, but I'm not a business owner. Right? Yeah. I'm not somebody trying to get into the space and needs a break or I'm not somebody getting fucked by taxes either, right? Because I huddle, so it's easy, right? Uh, but I, I don't see these fights as being good. So let's get off of that, all the political stuff. Um, I got Nidig has savings plans. What Game the, changer. What, what are the returns? Game changer. Oh, what do you mean returns? I, I, thought, I thought it was just the ability to Oh, so, to convert and save? Yeah, sort of like what Cash App is doing to small business owners. Gotcha. I, I, I thought it was like, like you know, say you got three people working for you and you mm-hmm. want to allow them the opportunity to save in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Nidig now has a platform to help you do that as a business owner. Fire. And give your team. And you could do it for yourself. I actually read quickly here, somewhere in here, that Drew Brees, the quarterback, um, he actually went to Nidig for some of his employees to do it, but also set up a savings account himself Fire. to collect Bitcoin or whatever. So... Nidig uh-huh. said on a Tuesday statement that the Bitcoin savings plan is catered to companies that want to dif- differentiate themselves by offering their employees the ability to get paid in Bitcoin. A need the institutional Bitcoin service provider discovered in a recent survey, 36% of respondents under 30 said they would be interested in allocating a portion of their pay in Bitcoin. We're so damn early. That's a pretty high number for being so damn early. 36% and we're so damn early would rather get in Bitcoin. Uh, this is somebody quoted here. We know how hard it, how hard it is for companies to attract top-notch talent. Uh, this is Patrick Sells, uh, which is CIO of Nidig. Uh, and Nidig Bitcoin Savings Plan is an easy-to-adopt benefit that can help employers stand out from the pack while providing their employees with a critical tool for protecting their financial futures. To that, you say, I would love to be in that sales position, to be the sales guy at Nidig. You know what I'm saying? You might regret that. But yeah. No, just like I, I would be passionate to talk about people about like setting that up. You know what I mean? What else do they do? They do fiat stuff, right? Uh, they do probably. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah. Tr- traditional banking. But okay. like to to be the Bitcoin they're guy. They're so ahead of it. Yeah. like Yeah, they're doing a lot. They're doing good things. Yeah. Uh, I think they're lending to miners. and Yeah, like, they were, I think, part of the round one unchained investment. That, yeah, there was, uh, they, they're doing a lot of good things. Um, yeah, super cool. The next part is where it says former NFL Drew Brees is among the first employers mm-hmm. to leverage the new product. Nidig said the uh, now retired athlete that has the second most. I don't, don't want to fucking talk about Drew Brees. Employers come. <laughs> also out there. Uh, In his uh, fifth season. Yeah, he uh, right through 350 uh, not only offers the option to employees of his company, but also opts into the Bitcoin savings plan himself to convert a portion of his compensation to Bitcoin. Uh, other companies that Breeze is involved with will also make the leap, including Everbold and Stretchstone. No idea who they are, but you're kind of getting the gist here. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of what Cash App is doing to small business owners. Here we go, Nat Dig trying to onboard uh, these savings plans. That's easy, I think, for them to do. So kudos to them for being ahead to even be able to offer such a service. I don't think it goes into the... Um, uh, oh, they got Drew Brees stated here saying, the more I immerse myself in the understanding of money, everything we've been talking about... Mm. Uh, <laughs> What do you know? Uh, Nye Diggs said the other companies launching Bitcoin savings plan include leading digital banking solution provider Q2, financial services companies MBB Bank and Vantage Bank, and sustainable Bitcoin miner Iris Energy. Nye Diggs itself will also offer the benefit to all of its employees. 
paycheck conversions into big. Hey, listen, man. Just while I'm reading this, I'm thinking about this shit. Remember when we talked about like Big Jack kind of eating Small Jack? Mm-hmm. What's going on? I mean, do I want to get paid in Bitcoin through my Strike app, which has no backing, has nothing besides the app itself? Relatively new company, a few mm-hmm. years old. Or do I want to get my saving, my paid in Bitcoin through Nidig, a respectable company with huge backs? But I don't know, Jack. Hey, man, I I, I use Strike, man. <laughs> I think people think I hate Jack. Hey, I use Strike, man. Listen, I'm, we, I'm we, calling a spade uh, a spade. We, we gave him his flowers, his early I, tib. Like, I we love spoke well of him. Jack. I'm ca- keep the yeah. same energy. Yeah, keep the same energy across the board. We just saying at, at Cash App, it's like they are they on that Tom Brady level right now. They're doing a lot. It's of things not that well. it, it is Cash App, but like Cash App is eating your cookies in the Lightning Wallet Exchange right now, right? Mm-hmm. Nidig is now put like right because Mahler's big thing was mm-hmm. athletes getting paid in Bitcoin. I think an athlete's going to go to Night Dig before they go to, I don't know who Strike's Strike. mother company is or, yeah. or, or who does that or whatever. Now, the keep the same energy across the board. Would there be this without Jack doing what he did with Kung and all this stuff? Mm-hmm. That's a really strong argument, too. I respect that. But we're talking spade to spade. Unless he got something up his sleeve that we haven't seen, mm-hmm. I believe the Europeans are still waiting on Strike. Uh, uh, I believe the app hasn't really improved much. I've mm-hmm. had a few bugs the last few times I've tried it. I, I love the app so much that I fight through the bugs, but I do always think about when I'm going through the bug, like the average person would hate this yeah, and would bounce immediately. I've I've sent Bitcoin a few times and just hangs up. Hang, right, same here. Yeah. I've done a few things. I've scanned a few QR codes. Do you, do you have Lightning on Cash App yet? Not yet. No, I, I, I don't think on. iPhone uses I want that. I want to see if it's going to be instant. Like, is there, oh, it has is, to be. It's is there, definition. Yeah, is there Lightning Channel going to hang up the way strikes? What do you mean hang up? Like, uh, if you if I go to send you or if I scan a QR code from you, yes, on Strike, yes, it'll just pause like there, like it's like the transaction's trying to go through and it's just waiting. Oh yeah, yeah. I think they'll eat their cookies just off of server and infrastructure, right? Yeah. Better programmers, right? But well, not better. I I I know Jack has a nice team underneath him uh, of not only pleb, uh, you know, programmers, but mm-hmm. like himself being a programmer. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just a money thing at that point. I think it's just size-wise. We, we mentioned before, it's a resource game. Yeah, yeah. It, they, they'll wipe their floors. But yes, uh, everything in Cash App, damn, we sound like Cash App horse. <laughs> everything in Cash App is smooth and intuitive. So I don't expect yeah. the Lightning implementation to be any less. Yeah. I, I just And I expect it to do the same thing, mm-hmm. which is turn fiat right from your Cash App balance into... This is getting hard. And then the other selling point, which is how we got here, of of Strike is you're like, oh, you could do the little meter thing and get paid 50% if you get direct deposit and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That is still really cool. But once again, look, look. And if I'm a business owner, the Strike thing don't even work for me. What am I going to tell my employees? Just get Strike? Mm-hmm. Like, you can do that, but that's out of their control and your control. You're just telling them to do something that yeah. they may not want to do. Yeah. So it's just one of those things. And by the way, how long before Cash App does it? You could already direct deposit into Cash App. There's already incentives for doing so. I'll give you $100 off of one of the cards if you do so. They're doing taxes now for free if you want to. Like, uh, at what these, point these... do you just say, hey, get paid in Bitcoin and Cash App? Yeah. So unless Little Jack has something up her sleeve, unless we're about to just see some like, yo, he's working on layer three already. And that's why I've, I think you're falling behind of your own chase. You'll always I, have a, a, a loyal... Yeah. Follower here in Bitcoin. I, yeah. I love Lil Jack. This isn't a diss. Calling a spade a spade. Keep the same energy. I don't I, know, man. I think Strike Apps market, I think the US is good for them, obviously, because of size. But I, I think their real market is going to be third world countries and wiring up third world countries. But there's money. I know. Moon. I know. Yeah. No, I know. But there's a lot of comp for those out, wallets. Outside man. of that, what are they doing? Doesn't El Salvador have like the Chibo thing or whatever? Like they got Chibo, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, and no, um, listen, I, I hate to come on here on the mic every week and, and try to sit here and talk bad about somebody who has brought so much to Bitcoin. Yeah. I get that, but- But we just is, saying where you at. This is entertainment. Yeah. This is calling a spade a spade, what it is, what it is, and they're going to eat your cookies. <laughs> I could tell by stories like this. Again. Like, the athletes are not going to head on over to strike unless they know Jack personally and build these relationships. They're going to go to Nightdick. Mm-hmm. I would at one thousand percent. What else we got here, man? It's let, let me tell you a joke. Yeah, hit me. So Aaron Rodgers, oh boy, Patrick Mahomes, oh boy, and Tom Brady walk into a bar to watch the Super Bowl. What happens? <laughs> Nothing. That's just crazy, Doc. Neither of them are in the Super Bowl. 
Yeah, but I don't think they fuck with each other. <laughs> no, nah, they don't. They not. Nah, they, they would. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that is kind of crazy. crazy. Uh, especially we've been we went through the Tom Brady thing to see yeah. Tom Brady and that. Um, I'm not gonna get into Tom. I would I would have loved to see Tom go out on top. Yeah, he deserves it. Facts. All that good stuff. That been I think he finally did put it in after doing the, yeah, the, yeah, the play yeah. action. Yeah, the hokey poke. Yeah, yeah. They're, nah, fam. He, he should have came back just for that. But uh, so, somebody also said uh, Giselle finally got him to finish. Uh, she been wanting him to go. Um, yeah. Either way, man. Talking about eating cookies, talking about Chrome, talking about Brave, <laughs> talking about browsers. Impervious browser. Impervious browsers Come coming, on. man. They got publicly released on April 7th Come during on. the Bitcoin conference. Hopefully not the shitcoin conference. Conference, yeah. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I can't go, bro. I just, I just don't want to find like listen if somebody you know obviously uh, privileged enough I guess if somebody from the internal was like hey man come in work the team like, yeah, that's yeah. great but like as like a, just a regular dude from the outside I'm not gonna go Yeah, I, I think it's just it's not gonna be worth it's pain and then I don't want to be the dude that's like paying extra just to be where everybody else is at like you know like these paywalls or whatever like I'm good mm-hmm. so that sounds very uh, douchey of me but <laughs> we're gonna skip this one here I've said it before on this show anyways I don't think Bitcoin conference is the one anyways mm-hmm. rather like a big block boom or something like that uh but either way impervious browser how is this gonna work man i i saw i saw an introduction to impervious when i was out in austin in november it looked crazy then but it wasn't this this yeah. is just mind-boggling the the post i saw i think it was from uh not the company but just someone uh, they were going through like everything that it's gonna that's offer here. and it's just like Everything you need that's decentralized. Check out the show notes. Uh, yeah. I have the link there. Impervious browser will be uh, publicly released April seventh during the conference. Zoom without Zoom. Mm-hmm. I guess we got Signal video. Like we're, there's, there's certain you know yeah. ways you can do that. That's been done. Google Docs without Google. I need that in my life. How does it work? Has to be some server somewhere. Or are they just are they just saying like a Google Docs replacement? You know, yeah, but but if you're saying like actual Google Docs without Google attached, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, th- I think it's like Google, a version. Yeah, yeah, it's it's okay. what you get in Google Docs. Medium without Medium, uh, Stacker News. Uh, shout out to you know uh, developer Stacker News. Um, I can see that. So that's Medium without Medium, a place where you can kind of go post whatever. WhatsApp without WhatsApp, that's Sphinx Chat. I can see that. Uh, payments without banks, duh. Bitcoin. What, what the hell are we doing here? Lightning in this situation, mm-hmm. but yeah, Bitcoin. Um, identity without the state. Hmm. What does that mean? Let's find out. Because I didn't KYC with my Brave browser. Yeah. Uh, they don't know anything about me. I have a VPN. They're blocking the trackers. What do they mean by identity? Yeah. I I, I don't know what that means. Uh, all without centralized in t- in the basically companies in the middle and built into the impervious browser. I got to see it, man. I'm excited about it. I yeah. sound like I'm not. Um, the, the common trend is marketing background. I know marketing, though. You mm-hmm. drop shit like this, eyes drop. I got to see it in action. I got to see it do these things. And ultimately, I got to agree that these apps are good enough to replace my other apps. Mm-hmm. Like I can't just say because, you know. Uh, yeah, I've been looking at a device. Um, I think it runs on like the Pixel 3 um, where it's basically, jeez, uh, what's the name? It's basically a, a decentralized like OS, um, but then you got to figure out how are you going to replace Google Maps, how are you going to replace Gmail. Isn't that what Catalyst and all those? It's like a Catalyst, but um, and they got like their Android own, version. They got their own store and stuff. Yeah. Well, Catalyst you could do it on Android too, but I, I I don't know. I just I don't know. I guess it's one of those old school questions. How far on the off the grid you want to be? I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I I like I like the idea of it, and I like thinking through it. I, I do too, yeah. But like the execution, it's like, damn, fam. Yeah. Like they're gonna get me in some other way, shape, or form. So I think my game at least is uh, mitigating. Mm-hmm. Like you guys don't have to have it all. I mean, you got a small f- frame. But like, let's say a few years ago when I was fully into like automation and all this stuff, like y'all were getting the full picture. Y'all were getting Jose like top to bottom. You could build them again if you want. Uh, yeah, I like to think now you're getting like fifteen percent Jose, right? Like a good enough piece to kind of see that he's doing some shit. But not enough to be able to replicate the shit. Yeah, not every move. Exactly. So I, I I'm a one up on that. I, I think I like that. Um, scammers trying to replicate Bitcoin. I forgot this number here, but it was interesting. Oh, okay. Many scammers have tried to make Bitcoin their own. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, from 2015, there's a massive list here, y'all. Uh, I back to the show notes. Um, uh, everything from Bitcoin X. I'm just gonna grab random names here. Bitcoin XT, Bitcoin Fast, uh, Bitcoin Unlimited, Bitcoin Planet. 
Mm. Interesting. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, we know that, that, that one. Super Bitcoin. United Bitcoin. <laughs> Oil Bitcoin. Bitcoin X. I remember Bitcoin X. Not, not, uh, Bitcoin World. I've never uh, heard of none of these. Bitcoin Top. I've heard, of, obviously, Bitcoin Cash. But. Bitcoin God. Quantum Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash Plus. Uh, somebody actually just took Bitcoin out and put Segway 2X. <laughs> I remember that too. Bitcoin Uranium. Yep. Bitcoin Pizza. Bitcoin W Spectrum. Bitcoin Incognito. Bitcoin Zero. <laughs> Bitcoin Green. Uh, there were 19 forks in December of 2017 only. None of them became widely adopted. Well, no shit. The Bitcoin network allows such events as forks. So this is just a diagram from top to bottom. Check it out in the show notes. It goes from 2015 all the way down to 2018. Uh, it shows all the versions uh, and it's basically about forking. So as we know, Bitcoin is open source. Yes, you can. That's why we all have nodes. You can make your own Bitcoin. Uh, you can take the code. You can take Satoshi's. I wouldn't say his original code because it's been polished. It's been. Mm-hmm. But you're gonna take. You could take the uh, framework. Yeah, you could take Satoshi's original concept and then go create your own coin. A lot of people have tried to do it. I've actually heard a lot of these other currents. Is it Madano that's like supposed to be like Bitcoin, but Monero. more Monero, but yeah. more private or whatever? Yeah. Boo hoo hoo. Who gives a shit? Because like we talked about with the dollar earlier, it's all about consensus. It's all about adoption. So nobody gives a shit if you can if your Cadillac has extra horsepower if everybody's attention is on the color of this Cadillac over here and it's flashier. It's just one of those things, not to call Bitcoin flashy, it actually works. But like these don't make sense because you can't get enough traction to get these shits off the ground. And then the obvious question is, is what I, well, there's nothing wrong with, well, and I'm saying that and I know people would argue that. There's nothing wrong with Bitcoin and what it does and what it's intending to do. Yeah. Why would you do this? Yeah. B- besides just straight trolling. I don't know. Yeah. Let me, let me tell you, I sat down on the plane talking with a guy next to me. Yep. And um, we started talking about Bitcoin and his whole thing is like, oh, you know, it, it's so slow. It's never going to be used as a medium of exchange Ouch. and this and that and that and that. And he's just going on and on and on and on. And I'm like, my man, have you heard about lightning? Uh, you know Jack Dorsey from Twitter? He he's no longer at Twitter. He's doing Bitcoin things now. He's bringing like uh, Lightning to Cash App. He's bringing Bitcoin to Cash App, like instantaneous transactions. So like that just kills your whole argument. Um, but I I think his belief was that uh, it's just early cryptocurrency uh, and Bitcoin, any alternative to the nation state dollar, is bad because when everyone opts out of it, what happens to the empire? Uh, is what I got from him. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's like, yeah, that's the whole point, bro. Peaceful protest. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Separate money from the state and and and, and, and watch the state relinquish its power to a, a better extent. You know? Yeah, I agree in that, in that sense. Uh, I think he's just, I'm for, was he an older guy? Oh, yeah. He, no, he's younger. And it's, oh, he you know, just, NGMI, bro. Like, you're not going to make it, yeah, fam. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. And you got to want to learn it. But it's, it's, it's hard to... I don't know, man. It, it takes so much for somebody to get it. I actually missed it one time. So like, yeah. it's one of those things. It comes to you when it comes to you, but you feel so damn bad to be so damn clueless. Um, and the, the the empowerment you get from understanding this stuff. Um, if you understand scarcity shock, this next topic, <laughs> it's funny to me. Michael Saylor at it again. I mean, he- Yeah, what did he do? Well, he- oh, He did the Twitter with Jack. Did you peep that? I didn't peep any of that. I read I, guys' notes. They I got were, two. I got two points. He yeah. bought. He, he they they bought more. Of obviously. course, that's yeah. huge, right? But then Neil Jacobs. Shout out to Neil Jacobs. He's pretty consistent on Twitter. Uh, Michael Saylor um, quoted uh, is going to be more aggressive about buying Bitcoin. <laughs> we'll look about very. We'll look. We're looking at various financing options. I saw that, including to borrow against the hundred and ten thousand Bitcoin and then reinvest that into more Bitcoin. Damn. <laughs> Super flip. <laughs> Super. Uh, this is unfair, but they, like, bro, their cost basis on all their Bitcoin is like thirty grand. But they're winning. They're winning. Yeah. And the thing is that is that like that's what I mean. Like if you just understand supply shock and you understand that this fucking guy is doing these type of games right here, and he's teaching people how to do that. Uh, I, I I think that's extremely magical. Yeah. Um, he was on a podcast and and I, f- I think it was with two other guests, and they're like, are, "Are you telling me that like?" Even if Bitcoin goes to zero, you're just going to always keep buying it. And but and he just like paused and kind of laughed and said, yes, like no brainer. You yeah. Know what I mean, it, it's it's hilarious. It, it's nuts. Uh, yeah. I, I don't I, I think that's dangerous, but I had to highlight it because I, all I thought was like, damn. Yeah. This dude ain't playing. <laughs> I mean, what does 2030 look like for MicroStrategy? 
Uh, they yeah. huddle. But that's why it's scary, though, man. That's why it's a... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, imagine Amazon holding all the Bitcoin. Yeah, he can't have that type of you know position, what I'm saying? man. That's a powerful position, man. Like, is that what they become? That Like, that's what I'm thinking through. Like, what is a corporation who sets themselves up well, now? What do they do with that power? What do they do with that power in the future? And what does their business look like? Speaking of huge, massive companies and what the hell are they going to do? The Spotify thing. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the Spotify thing uh, where... I, I like to think professional podcasters. I think we're good at what we do. I think what's happening with Joe and these musicians trying to pull themselves off, it's a very interesting topic. Can I get your thoughts on that first, sir? Um, yeah. I mean, more and more people are, are trying to opt out. Um, of what? Like Spotify in, okay. in protest. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like there's no way Joe can fail, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if 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 Spotify were to ax him, he becomes open source, probably gets most of his contract money, and like his show grows, his influence grows. Like what? Well, I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I. I heard on Twitter that people were trying to cancel their Spotify membership during the crisis. Yeah. And customer service was reaching back out to them and say, "You can't cancel." I don't know. I agree with you. Joe can go anywhere, yeah. and actually. If he goes on all platforms, he becomes bigger. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more focused on what Spotify is doing. You put a shitload of money into Joe. He's returned a shitload of money for you. But your business model is not off of podcasting. Your business model is music, streaming mm -hmm. music. I didn't really care when Neil, uh, is it Neil Diamond? When Neil mm -hmm. Diamond came out. And said anything because that's not my generation. I don't know about you. Not going to Spotify and checking out Neil. It was Neil, someone else. There's yeah, a bunch of people. I think it was Neil Young. Barb or... Neil Young. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was Neil Young. Sorry. Neil Diamond. Oh <laughs> Jesus. The, the Neil Diamond fans are looking at me like, fam. Um, well, anyways, the point is, I didn't really care. Then the next person, right? Another older act, right? Those are Barbara Streisand or something. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Then, younger artists started to come out. I don't really know who they are. But that's when I caught my attention because then to me it was like, oh shit, it's not necessarily Neil Young. It's Neil Young's relationships in this industry that's going to fuck Spotify. Meaning, I don't know this, this is all speculation, this is all just me ranting in my head. If Neil Young knows the head of Universal, Atlantic, right? They roll together, been together. Yeah, yeah, they just take all their artists off. They just make, and then they make their own streaming service. So then, like, what does Spotify do? Because I'm assuming the bag that Joe Rogan is bringing to Spotify is massive. Mm -hmm. But so is the music. Yeah. Can you afford to lose a Universal? Or can you afford to lose the music entirely? Yeah. Guess what the other platforms did? Apple, uh, Title, right there on the damn homepage, right there, splat it on. Get your Neil Young on. We got the Neil Young playlist rocking right here. Marketing. Competition. What does Spotify do? Joe Rogan doesn't matter here. Um, and I still, and we missed that rant because I think we lost that episode. I'm pretty sure that rant was in that episode. Joe Rogan is just a comedian. Joe Rogan is a very curious comedian. And what really ticks me off about people, especially the newer ones, is not mm -hmm. that you found Joe Rogan because I found them at one point is that people don't have the same energy with his power across the board. When they stand for one thing, like the COVID thing, and it makes sense, it's easy for them to ride with Joe and, and, and parade this guy, for, uh, fuck Neil Young, fuck all this, Joe's king, all that stuff. But I've seen plenty times in the history of Joe, because I've been a Joe fan for a while, where that same audience gets disappointed by his decisions, disappointed by the stuff he says. And then the energy is get this dude, get this guy the fuck out of here. This always goes back to the Chappelle, the last Chappelle stint for me. People just give a fuck about problems that matter to them and ignore everybody else's fucking problem. Why is Joe Rogan getting to the level where he has to get on his personal phone? I'm sure Spotify reached out to him and told him to do this and basically do a video, which he never does. Yeah. Copping knees, copping a plea, basically. That's what I heard. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't listen to the whole. It thing. was friend. Listen, I love. That's the yeah. thing with me. Like with me, it's like I like Joe Rogan, the dude. 
Yeah. Because I've been a fan for so long. So to me, it's like, I know what he did. I guess Spotify called you up. Now mm-hmm. you're a fan. We're getting mad pressure. Just you come on. Do, do us a little side. Joe's like, just, yeah, give, just give Why the hell not? But. What did he say? He was just basically, he, he actually gave a funny Neil Young story. Like, yeah, hey, I love Neil Young. Uh, and he gave like a, a story back in like from Boston days where he was like driving to Neil Young and he quit his job and all that stuff. Mm. But he basically uh, gave like a public service announcement, which was like, hey, you know, I know that, you know, my recent interviews with Dr. Malone and I raised a little bit. Spotify will now um, add a disclaimer to the videos and basically say that this is not medical advice or whatever. And then sure. he he explained what the real Joe Rogan fans understand. And that's when he broke down into the the only part of the video that was real yeah. was like, I've only ever just wanted to talk to people. Like, this is what I just enjoy doing. I like to hear, and he's like, look, if I could do a better job of getting the opposing opinion, then I need to do a better job at that. He's like, yeah. I schedule these on my own. The, the, he said that publicly. He's like, I schedule these on my own. And sometimes I don't do a good job of getting you know, like the Dr. Malone and then somebody to oppose him right after so yeah. that people could get like the real. So he's like, I get that. I'll do a better job of that. He took ownership of that. While I'm listening to that, though, I'm thinking this is just a comedian that has a podcast that likes to talk to people. What the fuck is this country thinking about? Right. Yeah. I mean, you got the White House talking about more needs uh, to be done. And it's just like, if that doesn't raise your eyebrows about a comedian who loves to smoke weed, who talks about DMT, who talks about aliens. But that's what I'm saying. You got to have the same energy with him across the board and stop. Because the reason, in my mind at least, he gets to the level of like the White House caring Mm -hmm. is because those newer, you know, because of the COVID, Dr. Malone fans, Mm -hmm. are now putting Joe Rogan in this like, like, oh, like he's the almighty, look what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And I think that's helping them with their argument with their friends and with their followers and with whatever they believe. But it's hurting podcasting it's hurting joe rogan it's hurting a lot of people that just genuinely love to do what you and i do and just get on the mic every week and just talk and this is where my shit boils because of that because it's just all for like Chappelle said for people just to be able to explain their little small problem in a world full of massive problems to everybody uh i don't like this i don't know what spotify does but i tell you one thing they're gonna fold they have to fold because if I'm calling in and saying, hey, this music subscription that I signed up for, I want to cancel. You tell me, hey, you can't cancel. By the way, disclaimer, it was only temporarily. It was happening. Uh, somebody, a lawyer on the internet, whatever, said, uh, if it's for a few hours, it's a technical problem. And if it's more than a day, it's a legal problem. They can't stop you from canceling your subscription. This is the dumb shit about it, though. Oh, that's support. So it's not that. I was going to say, you can still listen to Joe Rogan for free. You don't need to pay. But I can see where they're protesting their money like, mm-hmm. oh, you won't get my 15 bucks. I'll go bring it somewhere else or whatever. Fair. I didn't really care about the older acts, but now the younger acts are coming. And if the younger acts are going against Joe, they're either extremely stupid, right? Because they just, or they're being forced by the record label to, to have that. to. It's crazy. And forced crazy. in the record label is not a secret. Most of these contracts are forced. A lot of these people that are doing the shit that you're watching uh, is forced because some dotted line that they signed on. Um, I think Spotify has to drop Joe. Does you do think they? So I feel like they've I feel like they've been like solid up until this point. Yeah, because they make a big bag. Um, I, I feel like they're past it. Like I, is, you, I just think that business model is going to kill them because you yeah. can't charge fifteen dollars a month to listen to Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's where it's at. So to me, it's like you keep Joe because do you they spend. Have, do they have books? Huh? Do they have books? No, is, no, no, okay, just no, podcasts. No. Uh, podcast and music, uh, but the, the, you can't charge me fifteen dollars for that. So if there's no music here, mm-hmm. and you stand behind Joe Rogan, which we would love for them to do, we have a fucking backbone for Christ's sake. Mm-hmm. Stand behind Joe Rogan, but have the pockets to do so, man. Who's gonna pay fifteen fifteen bucks to listen just to Joe Rogan? Yeah, and I could go, and don't tell me, oh, it's because we have the best library of podcasts, baloney, baloney. Podcasts mm-hmm. are open; we can listen to them anywhere. Yeah. There's only your exclusive ones that we can't listen to. That's where they're crippled. That's where they're fucked. And then obviously no company wants to be under the scope of the White House. They'll fuck you over in taxes. They'll fuck you over somehow that we, me and you don't even understand. They'll fuck mm-hmm. you over. I think for, uh, Spotify has to let it go. Um, See how that, it plays out. But it's once again, the people that don't understand the Joe Rogan experience or the Joe Rogan show or Joe Rogan the person. Um, also, the, by the way, there is like 
there is a bad Joe Rogan crowd too. A lot, a, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't get this stuff. He has said a bunch of shit, uh, 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 nigga, being ob- over and over again in a bunch of different times. I don't know the context of when he said it, but it's out there. Go look at it. it mm-hmm. It's so you know this is the thing. You only champion him up when it works towards the narrative that you are now portraying. Everybody's obviously trying to expose this COVID thing. Well, thirty million people. He's easy for me to throw in front of my family member and say, "See, look." But he's been doing that for a very long time. But mm-hmm. now you're causing trouble for him because you're fucking up his money, fucking up Spotify, right? You're doing all this stuff, and and we're gonna see where the cards end up. Uh, but the only part that's good is if Joe Rogan gets back to open platform, mm-hmm. that's gonna be incredible for the fans, incredible for him. I want to see him take on someone with an opposing view, and I think at that point the numbers grow. I was just thinking like, who's gonna oppose it? I don't know. That that was like when he said it like. I, I understand the sentiment of it and it could work in certain situations. He has really good conversations about like the whole transgender thing and you can get opposing thoughts on that stuff. But like, let's narrow it down to COVID. So, the, so the, who who follows up Malone? Uh, the general surgeon. No, like, like with like an actually follow up these kind. I don't mean like their position. I mean, like they know that if they go on Joe Rogan, they're going to look foolish. Who yeah. can actually back it? Oh, I don't know. So nobody yeah. will show up. Yeah, because no, you know damn that. well if they could back it they would have yeah. been there like hold on right. so and then I remember telling you in the last podcast or I, I, I forget what we talked about in that last episode but I remember when Fauci was doing his podcast one he was on a bunch of my favorite podcasts so my man you know what podcasts are mm-hmm. you know the power of them because the White House or whoever put you on a PR campaign through podcasting mm-hmm. that's not to say he didn't do shows but this is the first time ever I've seen like that type of figure in the podcast and kind of say like we need to make our rounds to these podcasts right and mm-hmm. of course it was talking about masks it was talking about shit so the, the 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 podcast with 30 million people that's the one you need to go on that's the one you need to to express your your case for mm-hmm. but you know without ruffling Listen, anybody's feathers he ain't got nothing to talk about I'd, I'd love to see Fauci on Rogan and and Rogan ask Fauci about gain of function research that Rand Paul keeps grilling him on. It's like, bro, they're like, we got the receipts that you create, you help create this thing. You know what I mean? Like, let's hear that conversation with Rogan. So, in, in, in respects to Joe Rogan, even proposed, who's going to show up? Nobody. So he can't even be. He can't even honor that because yeah. nobody's going to show up. But then what? We expect them to not have these conversations, and right. it's baffling to me because when people, when he was having great conversations before, and they just mm-hmm. weren't as big as COVID, and uh, and the Nobody gave a fuck, but they were really big conversations. I agree with you. He's always yeah. had breathtaking shit. Yeah, like guest, I should say. Yeah, and it's always up to the listener, which is what I love about him, to figure out if the person's full of shit or not. Mm-hmm. I think Joe does a really fantastic job of just like giving you a really good interview and letting you decide, yeah. not letting him decide for you during the conversation, and not letting the other person take it away so they can sell you whatever the fuck they're gonna sell you. It's an honest conversation. He stops people. He checks people. He makes people come back to their points. And that allows me, the listener, to be like, oh, this is interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's that's full of shit. Like, you know, I don't think he's going to get anybody from the White House to come down. Uh, and you and I both know he's not going to get anybody credible enough on the other end to be able to come in here and say, no, this is a problem. This is, mm-hmm. They're just going to look foolish. Yeah. Right? And they're going to get picked apart. I, I, I don't know. But that whole situation, Spotify folds. They have to. Nobody's going to pay $15 a month for podcasts, with value for value especially. Excuse me, and um, and the fact that you can listen to podcasts for free anywhere you want. So if they're gonna hold on to Joe, Joe has to be able to give them something in return that says your subscriptions are not gonna go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe this is a worthless talk. Maybe people stop leaving. It's not a record label thing, and it's just an individual artist thing. Cool, but I don't think it is. And you know, in yeah. the record label, individual artists don't call shit. No, they they don't. But simultaneously, though, Rogan's gonna gain a whole new audience. And is Everybody getting has. a whole new rise. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, what do those numbers look like in comparison to before those interviews? Show, I hope not either. Uh, I hope yeah. it doesn't. Because it, you, see, you see that video. You could tell it was Spotify who called them to do that. And it's yeah. like, I was like, oh, that's not Joe. Yeah. This is, it's getting nasty. It's getting to the point where he has to, like, I don't know. He has to yeah. talk in behalf of them. And, yeah. and, and from the very beginning, the agreement was is that, oh, they don't own shit. They just, oh, uh, we just, they own the exclusivity to the broadcast. Mm-hmm. But they don't know anything. They don't know the Joe Rogan experience. So in my mind, unless he truly wanted to do it from the heart, you never know. In my mind, Spotify calling me is like, y'all figure it out. Mm-hmm. I got my bag. This whole shit belongs to me. I don't have to defend it. I'll just walk away. Yeah. 
But unless, like I said, he loves the people he's working with in Spotify, he enjoys what Spotify is doing. Because he has said it on his show plenty of times. Look, I, he likes the old model, right? Like, yeah. uh, he talked to Adam Curry, and he likes ads. Like, he's like, look, I, I just don't want to worry about shit. I like the income that comes in. I don't do anything tricky. I don't do anything crazy. I'm even surprised that I'm even here. Right? He talks about that often. I respect that. Yeah. So, to me, it's just one of those things where it's like, he's not chasing the newest shit. He just wants to conversate. He, like you yeah. said, he's just a hippie. He, yeah, uh, le- le- legit. Yeah, he he, le- he says it all the time that he leans more progressive on pretty much everything across the board except a few things. Yeah, except a few things. And and as you can see, look at this. Look at look at where we've gotten to. Where that comedian that's just progressive for the most part now has to get canceled because the White House says Spotify can't do open broadcasting. What? Scary, bro. They're not gonna win though. Like yeah, what? yeah, no, absolutely, they're not gonna win. But it's it's scary that they're they're talking about trying that. You know what I mean? It is, so, man. This is going to be interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh, Spotify will fold the knee. Uh, $15 a month subscription times 4 million users. It's going to be hard to replace with just one podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I listen to their other exclusive podcast. It ain't it. It ain't it. Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see what it is. Um, I have going into mining. Let's go into mining a little bit. Yeah, let's talk about it. Another small miner. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know, man. It, it looked pretty efficient. Correct. What do you mean efficient? Like it happened? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. like the numbers. The, Yet the, the another solo and... miner with only thirteen Terra has just won a full block reward, six Bitcoin. Uh, That's insane. A one in one hundred thousand chance of solving a block in a day. It's a lottery. That's actually not bad. Yeah, one hundred thousand. The lottery is like one in a million. Yeah, million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like one in a hundred thousand actually ain't that bad of yeah. odds. Um, I, I six I, Bitcoin, bro. I have to see historically how often this happens. Uh, yeah. I understand it can happen. That's what the you know randomness of the difficulty adjustment and solving the next block is. But you think something's going on? Uh, n- no, no. Because by definition, if I think something's going on, I think something's fishy. I don't think anything's fishy because who can manipulate thirteen terra hashes grabbing it? Um, if there is any manipulation, it's in the store. Yeah, it's in the like. Oh, that one S9 was connected to a farm. That's what I've been seeing online. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes. I, so it's it's wired up and it looks like it's solo, but it's really connected to a farm. Or the person really has X amount more miners. I just have to figure, if not, then great for these individuals. But like, yeah. I've been in Bitcoin for a little bit. You've been in Bitcoin for a little bit. Unless it's one of those news effects where now we have more eyes on shit like this and before we didn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen such a trend. Yeah. Where just like small miners just keep hitting. I'm here. So I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, if it keeps happening, I'm sure everybody's going to start looking deeper into it. Um, uh, somebody put it, it looks like someone with a single S9 who only joined a couple days ago with a recent hype around the solo blocks. A choice I'm sure they're static about right now. It's propaganda? Uh, I mean, you can you can probably see the transaction. Stays off. At a I'm assuming. Uh, I don't know. Once again, I don't to think that something's wrong means to think that's something fishy. Uh, but don't trust Verify, right? Yeah. On solar pool. Yeah, because more people will start doing it. Maybe more people are going to start doing this. I don't know. And I still want decentralized pools. I still hate that the pools are uh, one. Yeah, yeah, one. I don't know if they're centralized like like fiat thing, but yeah, they're controlled in that sense. I don't know. They, they have the receipt here, the not the receipt, but the actual code. Possible block solved diff. Block accepted. Solved and confirmed block 721575 by... He's solo mining, so his wallet address is his ID. User wallet address, hash rate, 13 tera hash. Worker, once again, solo mining, so it's his address. And we could actually, I, I can't copy and paste the picture, but that's the address you would look to see where the, where the, uh, the reward went, because that's, when you mine solo, you don't connect to a pool's address. You use your, uh, or when you mine in a decentralized pool, um, you know how you uh, on the pools now you do like their stratum. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, it would be your wallet address as your user ID. And we then, talked about and that. Then your stratum. So, yep. block solved after a crazy big number shit at uh, three point nine. All right. Well, you know, I, pictures don't mean shit. I mean, it's just a snapshot of a picture. But hey, man, if you guys got six Bitcoin, go for it. I still don't think I would solo mine right now, and I don't have an S nine. I have something bigger, but I still don't think. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see time will tell. I didn't have much on that. I just wanted to highlight that another person got lucky as hell. Yeah, it's it's to me it's becoming suspicious. Yeah, I would have to just know yeah. how it can be manipulated though. Like mm-hmm. oh, unless it's just a fake story. Suspicious in yeah, that yeah, sense yeah. where it's like but like you can't really I don't know. I don't think you can really trick I don't think you can really trick uh you know. 
Yeah. But I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Software, software. There's always loops and holes. Maybe they'll patch it. Maybe it'll lead to a patch. Uh, but I, I have to know more about this besides just an article that somebody wrote that says they got it and a little scrap of image mm-hmm. that I could, you know, possibly get from history or somewhere else or whatever. Uh, but yeah, th- this is the last uh, topic here that has to do with mining. 444 terahashes. Yeah. That was the uh, the new device, yeah? A new, yeah. Devices are more accurate than a miner. But yeah. yeah, yeah. That thing looks like a... So I got all the links in the show notes. Hash rate index. New miner just dropped. New miner. It's, it's a new miner, but they called it a new new miner. Mm. <laughs> Trolling. <laughs> New miner. First of all, this thing looks like a a a, a, a GI Joe. It's like green, right? Safety pack. Yeah, yeah. like this looks like uh, the battery that Wally had in his chest. And uh, I don't know, but anyways, it reportedly clocks four hundred and forty four terahashes with an efficiency of twenty point two J backslash terahash. I don't know what that is. I'll be honest here. Given today's price, you would get seventy eight dollars a day. 211 uh, that's the uh, over 200 sets 200,000 sets crypto mining publicly yeah, stated yeah i don't i don't believe that's real until i see until i see a link with like a spec sheet Gryphon until then it's there to purchase 60k really. of these rigs gryphon mining whoever gryphon mining that's another thing fucking mining companies come out of nowhere i'm supposed to like know who the fuck they are gryphon mining has publicly stated that it has purchased 60k of these rigs somebody bought them mhm for 1.7 is that billion it says bln sounds like billion to me i've never seen it broken down that bln nah how, how many billion 16 1.7 billion 1.7 oh well for 60,000 of them <clears throat> yeah i don't know all right a pre-order deal there was a cash value each rig at $28,000 a pop for $64 a tera hash no what about $64 a tire hash. Didn't they say earlier that it was like 70 bucks? No, it, it earned 78 a day. This is bullshit. <laughs> um, yeah, I know, 70 a day, but it says per tire hash. Here. So it says, seven, oh. it says 78 a day, and then so, unless I'm reading this wrong, and then somewhere in the bottom it says um, that it's uh, about $64 per tire hash. Gotcha. Oh, okay. I think the the accumulation of all their devices together is that generates about sixty four dollars a tera hash. Got it. Of all the devices that they bought, I don't know. Yeah, I I agree with you. I, I don't I don't think it matters to me. I don't have twenty eight thousand dollars to buy a miner. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably would not pay twenty eight thousand dollars for something as risky as mining, mm-hmm. which is also very strange. Uh, but we talked about it. Let's see what uh, Dorsey got. Let's see what Block got. Uh, this machine. Uh, that's not true because when I first saw the S19, I thought it was kind of small and it's pretty beefy. Pictures ain't everything. I was going to say it looks pretty compact. It looks pretty small, but I could also see where that's just a small image and that thing is pretty big. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why it has all this fucking other It shit. doesn't look real to me though. It looks like a tower. Yeah. Like a, one of those like weird towers. I mean. That's one, like if they showed a video of it and they had it on and it was humming, it'd be like, okay, I'd probably take them serious. But to yeah, me, like, the, the picture is not doing it. Like to me, it's like, we know that these, Miners only doing one thing. Mm-hmm. I unless it's uh, like you're short on resources, like to get like the chips and stuff like that. I don't think it's hard to put a box around these chips that has in- internet connectivity and some fans, right? And and then kind of get some cooling going on. So like, yeah, you, we can make miners all the time. It's the numbers that they're saying that's nuts. You know, yeah. 444. And I don't see unless I just can't read this and I'm just dumb because I I, I don't see. The energy use of that. Yeah, I was going to say that too. There's no use of wattage. So when you see other miners, they always say, you know, 3250 kilowatt hour uh, or, you know, 3000 kilowatt hour is the electric rate. You don't see it on that. That's another reason why I'm like, "Eh, I want to see the real spec sheet for that purpose. Yeah. Because then you can actually run the numbers. Um, But yeah, yeah, let's see if it's real. I mean, we know there's going to be innovation in mining, but is this one legit? Let's see. Yeah, competition and stuff too. Uh, The Bitman already saying hydro cooling and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, no. Uh, we'll see. I think the uh, um, it's just bad when the hash goes up too fast anyway. So uh, this is good for certain type of miners and bad for a huge selection of other miners. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Will the S19 have an, it, it carry enough age like the S9s did? Um, Hope that, so. That, you know, what's miner? Like, there's a lot yeah. of different people. Um, Bitmans is more re- believable because they do this, the hydro cooling one. 
But what 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 does what minor got next? Like what are they working mm-hmm. on? Who's you know like I'm not and you minor that's creative. Uh, yeah, I'm not interested in, in that type of stuff. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe 444 comes out. Maybe dudes that got 28k can drop that, uh, and then they get fucked when the difficulty adjustment goes up and you don't get your advertised 74 dollars. That's why mining is also an asterisk for me because it's like it all depends on so much shit mm-hmm. that for somebody to say that. It's enticing at sixty-four dollars. Let's just say sixty-four dollars. That could very easily become forty bucks, right. twenty bucks, and then are we talking about four hundred and forty-four terahashes? Nobody gives a shit. So uh, interesting. It does look like some weird Xbox or something like that. The link is in the show notes. We'll see what happens, man. Yeah, that's all I got for the people. Anything else? Yes, sir. No, that's all, bro. Guys, as you know, we appreciate you guys as always. Check us out on Bitcoin TV. First and foremost, that's the place to be. Um, check us out on YouTube after that if you don't have access to Bitcoin TV. But if you have access, you, you have access. Uh, check us out. Show them some love. Hit, hit subscribe wherever it is that you listen to us. Uh, you know, Leave some comments. Uh, we appreciate that love. Video episodes Friday. Friday are the video episodes for every single uh, episode. And the audio comes out on Wednesday. That's important for me to say. So if this is a Wednesday, you're checking us out on audio then value for value first is, is the most preferred way and the best way to listen to us. Uh, you can do that on Fountain app. You can do that on Breeze app. You can do that on Sphinx app. You can do, there's more and more coming every day now. Um, you can do that. You can reach out on uh, um, on Twitter and, 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 and uh, use Lightning that way if you don't want to do the Fountain app. But go do the Fountain app. It's better. Uh, but there's different ways to get uh, the audio experience and be able to support the show. You can also find this on all the free podcasting platforms, including Spotify. Hey, um, $15 for the talking to bits. I don't know Spotify. <laughs> but check us out over there. Episode 52 in the books. Subscribe, rate, share, do all that good stuff. We will see y'all next week. Good, sir. Thank you so much. Good to see you, bro. Likewise, man. We'll talk to y'all next week. Later. All opinions expressed by Jose and Ben or any of the guests on this show are solely their opinion and their opinion alone. Their opinions do not reflect the opinions of any other sponsors or other parties involved in the recording of this show. Do not treat any opinion expressed by Jose and Ben as a specific endorsement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy. Their expressions of their opinion on this show is purely for informational purposes.